I'm John Coley. I'm a musician, uh, singer-songwriter, uh, folk player, blues player, whatever really comes to hand. I came from a very, very musical family. We were always listening to and making music. Granddad was an amazing piano player. Uh, Mum was at uh, symphony concerts all the time. She was a singer with a choir. And Dad has one of the best musical ears I've ever heard. He's, he's, he's got a, an appreciation for music, unlike anyone I've, I know, really. So it was always in the house. It was always something to talk about. And you're always not just listening to it, but told what it meant and where it came from and the history of it. It was a big part of everything I did. In a strange way, that was that was where my love of music came from. I started out as a folk player because my, my fascination was with the history of music and the history of how it's constructed. I love people. Archaeology, pe people equate history and archaeology together and they're not. History is about events and archaeology is about people. You spend your time, you know, going through the remains of people's houses and where they lived and worked and historians try and find the battles. Um, but I love people and I love how they communicate with the world and the things they leave behind. And the last hundred years, we've been granted the ability to hear voices of people that have gone. And that's, that's quite something, even now. Even now I hear something that's 70, 80, 90 years old, or even things that are 40 years old. That was a wonderful disc I got given a few months back of a uh, closing time in a pub in 1951. And it was just recorded by an amateur guy with a tape recorder and they all stand up and sort of uh, sing um, <laughs> uh, Nelly Dean as a, as, a, as a group. And it's this huge sort of communal sing song and the barman yells, time everyone, they all leave. And you hear the jangling of the glasses and the, the miners' keys on the belts as they go out the door. And you just think, that's, that's something lucky to have. And like sound and music do that. And there's a connection that you get with that you don't get with any other bit of any other bit of history or archaeology it's, it's a really human connection that's that's where the love of it comes into me It's a world that's been and gone, and like you can get to hear it and feel it, and be in that room with those people who've been, you know, dead for half a century. There's no one in that recording who wasn't alive when Queen Victoria died. <laughs> but we're the first generation to get that privilege to get to hear these things. <laughs> so I did that for a good few years. I taught in that and um, researched that for a long time, and then I was in quite a, a rough accident and. Uh, quite badly damaged my right arm and I picked up guitar having played clarinet as a kid and a tiny bit of piano um, I picked up a guitar basically as physiotherapy and it sort of took off mm -hmm. and I didn't really realise how competent I was at it until someone asked me to play publicly and then I sort of went oh I'm, I'm actually quite good at this um, but that was a, a surprise to me almost as much of a surprise it was to my old music teacher um, but, uh, yeah. When I had my accident, I had some stuff in my very early days, and I asked for a lot of it to be destroyed. There were a lot of recordings and books and songwriting things that I just asked. When there was a chance I wasn't going to be getting back to doing it, I just said, I don't want to see them. It's only been a part of my life for a couple of years. It was quite a happy part, but... I didn't want to look at them with the prospect of not being able to do it. Um, luckily for me, I had a very good friend of mine who, whenever I asked him to bin something, actually just stuck it in the cupboard. And um, when we moved out of my place about uh, that had been in Chester about four years ago, three years ago, we found this huge box of posters and business cards, demo CDs, cassettes, everything and anything. So there's a there's a fun little project that a friend of mine is doing at the moment to sort of assemble. What there is of the history of touring the last the last ten years or so. The Echo Arena show I played. Unreleased record covers, <laughs> like rough outs for records. There's some really fun stuff in there, some really interesting things. Um the the poster for the um um 
festival, the, the one of the first festivals I did, the Ed Sheeran crash, that's quite a fun one. It's in there somewhere, um, although he's not on the poster. It's one of the first sort of proper proper shows I played, and then six months later, he's like, hmm. But um, that's the nature of that world. I was lucky to be in a scene where people like that piled through that venue, piled through the place I was. I would live next door to a jazz bar called Alexander's that was the sort of hub for a creative scene in Chester that's, that, that was extraordinary. Like, we had an open mic run by a guy who could pick Blind Blake tunes in his sleep. Like, you don't get that. You know, he'd know Nick Drake at university and you just go, this, is, this, this shouldn't exist in a small town. You shouldn't be this lucky to get people around you who can play like that. And it's quite rare. And it's why whenever I move somewhere or do something, I try and set something of that ilk up and share what I do because it's the only reason I was ever any good at what I've done is that people were so generous in what they taught me and what they introduced me to. I spent too long on the firing lines There was too much time between that girl's heart and mine She lights a third cigarette with a fifth match And the distance in her eyes Says she's fine Cause there's no winning a battle So she'll fight for mine With the sparks of phosphorus and nicotine There's sympathy for Judas Because no one else to be The same the man and me would have thrown this fight. Oh, we never had, I wouldn't be standing here tonight. Oh, and the boys out on Slater Street, they're reading the rights to the dreams they bring out every night. Have I gone too far this time? Is it time I chose between water and wine? For the sparks of phosphorus and nicotine, simply for Judas, for the young that's the feeling. I've done some work out in New York, which was which was great fun. I spent a, a season there doing um, bits and pieces of shows. Mostly we went to record um, a place called Mighty Toad Studios to cut some tape demos um, for some work we were doing for a, um, a label project. 
but it ended up being quite an eye-opening experience and I ended up doing sort of free shows for a lot of the folk clubs and um, that really convinced me to take what I was doing much more seriously than I had before and actually try and make some kind of record of what I was doing because I'd always considered myself more of a listener to be honest I've always gone from the adage that if you're not listening to six times what you're playing you're not really going to come up with anything new um, I think there's a, a, an awful lot of people pick an influence and stick to it you get an awful lot of people who've discovered John Mayer learn to play like him master what you can do but you're only going to ever be an imitation because that's the only influence you have unless you go digging at the roots of that and figuring out where he pulled that from that bit he nicked from Jackson Frank and that bit he pulled from a Clapton record and that's just from the love of blues that's original uh, but if you don't know his roots and his origins if you don't dive into it you don't get anything new and I think that's a big problem today with the way people discover music is that you discover it on a YouTube video and the only person credited is the lead musician so you never work out that the guitarist you've heard playing on all of um, the early country records is the same guitarist on Dylan's Nashville Skyline is the same guy who plays harmonica for hundreds and hundreds of acts in the early 2000s and all the sort of indie revival bands if you don't know that you'll never see his name you'll never see the connections you'll never see what what brings the music together that's why records are wonderful because they credit everyone there's the space to credit people and to actually see where the music comes from I've attempted to make records for a few years we, we tried uh, we did an EP early on We've done live bits and pieces um, we tried to put out um, various bits nothing ever quite gelled and I realized quite it, it took me long enough to get the confidence up to realize that what I was writing deserved that treatment but I realized that I wouldn't be happy until I was able to give it treatment as an album as a record because that's the art form in music that I love is listening to a record start to finish with two sides and that's how I write that's that's how my brain works um, but it's an expensive and, and difficult job there's not a lot of people who have the the know-how to make a record like that anymore to, to be honest with you about what it takes and how it takes to make one the, the art costs and the the right musicians and the right space and making it affordable because you know you, you're on your own you're on your own money basically you're, on, you're you're working as you go to to what specs you have you've not got a label behind you anymore no label wants to support albums anymore they want singles they want stuff they can put out quickly so i think i think it was it was finally being able to do it as a whole record that made me turn around and do it um but yeah it was 10 10 years of hard work um, to get there, and the songs on it that are three that were you know written in the studio, and the songs on it that were um, written nine years ago. So it's quite a, a sweep through, and the songs on it people were expecting to be on there that aren't, and vice versa. It, it, it's very much thought of as an album. Um, the difficulty is going to be how to follow it. <laughs> Good girls have bad dreams after all. 
so I wait Wait until you're fast asleep The same old trick it runs too deep And I slip out while you're dreaming Cause I'm nothing special you see When you're wondering why I leave, I was too scared to dream. Oh, cause some days even dirt can gleam, and mirrors never show the things they mean. Some days even the water runs dry And I guess good girls have bad dreams After all So we did it very much in the way that you used to go about making a record, which is I had a very good friend of mine who's a brilliant um, producer and engineer um, sit with me and go through the sort of many, many sets of demos and recordings, arrangements, live takes, lyric sheets, didn't basically pull together a swathe of songs, more than we needed for the record, so probably 20 songs to record a 12 track record. And you go in and you start all of them, you lay down the drums for all of them, and then you start trying to build it up. And you have to go with sort of your instinct at the time. If you're on, if you're flying through a song and every take's landing, you finish that one. If you're on a song and you're on take 14 and nothing's making sense, you stop and you do the next one and you come back to it. And in the end, you just end up with the first 12 you finish because they're clearly the ones you're feeling and the ones you're in the room for. Um, and it's quite it's quite something and it's quite often not what you expect. You can go in with... It's very easy to go in and think, well, I've got this, it's going to be the single. This is going to be the main track off the record. And this one isn't as important, but we'll get it if we can. But actually within a studio setting, they all change and shift around. It's all about the take you get and the moment you get. So there's a, actually the lead track off the album was one that wasn't originally going to be on it. It was a track I'd recorded before as a single. Um, and we got a take that was just so beautiful, we had to use it. Because I'd got no pressure on me to have it right. <laughs> so that's, that was very much a, that, that's very much the process. And it, it, it's an incredible amount of planning. People think these things are free form. They think you can just go in and, you know, you've got two months. We probably cut the whole thing inside about ten days in the studio, if not less. Ten or twelve days. Um, and that's including every instrument part. That's including all the different takes and components. And when you think that an album used to take six months, just the planning level and the amount of organisation, that's that's the real masterclass in, that, that came to me in making this record, was how much organisation I've got my producer to thank entirely for that. It just wouldn't have been possible to get through <laughs> a record and to do it in that space of time. And we both sort of stopped at the end of it and went, somehow we did that. <laughs> it was quite a nice sort of feeling of, of a lot of effort, a lot of effort and a lot of work. And even longer mixing it, even longer working with it and getting it right once you've done it, because it doesn't stop when you stop recording. It's a it's a huge process of then doing it and then promoting it and pushing it in different mixes and edits and what the radio stations want and what the independents want and what does the label want you to do that you're angling it at and what the promoters want you to do. It's a huge long process that goes on long after you've recorded the song. It's exhausting. I went through about three or four points where despite it being finished, I just went, I'm not sure I can actually go ahead with this because everything I'm doing makes more work, makes more effort, more time. 
Um, but I'm incredibly glad we did and that I was pushed and nudged to do it. Um, my manager's been wonderful throughout this um, in encouraging me and just being able to walk away whenever I've said I'm not getting on with it and uh, give me the encouragement to sort of um, nudge it through at my own speed, which has been fantastic. But we didn't exactly choose the easiest time to tour an album either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By coincidence, we've had this, this record sitting for... By the point it came out, it had been sitting in the flat in physical... We recorded it two years ago this month, and it had been sitting in the flat for a good year and a half before anyone saw the first copies. It was quite strange to be shut in here, wondering if we'd ever tour again surrounded by 500 copies of <laughs> my own record on LP in nondescript boxes covered in various rubbish and things that couldn't get picked up. It was quite odd. I think people say you have to live with the record for a while after you've made it. I'm not sure that's entirely what they mean, but it, it certainly felt it certainly felt like it was a it, it, its presence was always here waiting to have something happen. <laughs> You'll take your time You'll always be on your terms And never on mine You give me all your reasons And you only give me time lines. It doesn't matter anyway You can't blame the boy for trying When you ran away from him Cause he wasn't your style But you'll cry on his shoulder Suits you to cry And you'll think of him from time to time But he won't reply Doesn't matter anyway Can't blame the boy I'll chalk it up to experience and another lesson learned Another bridge of war to cross and left to burn But I think of you from time to time so perhaps I'll never learn Doesn't seem to matter anyways Can't blame a boy for trying It's been a battle, um, but uh, it's quite the quite the feat, and the artwork's rather wonderful. In fact, that's the the roof of um, of Alter Lab Studios where we cut it, which is the same roof that was used for the filming of half of um, Twenty Four Hour Party People, with all the the drum kits set up outside to try and capture the different elements. It was originally Cargo Studios. Yeah, fantastic space. And just a really experimental studio, somewhere you can actually try out ideas and throw things at people and they don't think you're insane. We spent a lovely afternoon wrangling a piece of hosepipe to make the drums sound bassier. It was great. Sounds amazing. 
and just a wonderful team of musicians on it as well. This is this is the thing I'm, I want to do is because everyone is credited. Everyone has a track credit. Everyone has a listing of exactly what they've done. Their involvement. There's a huge list of credits and and. <sighs> To me, it's not just my record. That's the one thing that's kept me going with it, even when I didn't think I'd get out on the road again. Is it's not just mine. It belongs to a lot of people. Like it's there's, there's an investment in it from an awful lot of people, and that means an awful lot to me. It's it's quite something. I think so. That brings it back to the yeah. It's all about the people. Absolutely. What's the point of doing it if it's about you? <laughs> You're not the one that has to listen to it. You need to feel like you're listening to the person who's been recorded. You don't want to feel like you're listening to performance. You don't want to feel necessarily like you're listening to a recording. You want to feel like you're hearing that person. And that's that's how the best records come about. And for some people, that's producing them so you can hear what's in their heads. And for other people, it's taking it all the way and sitting back and just hearing them as naturally as you can. And it's different for every act. But at the end of it, people want to believe that what they're hearing is genuine, truthful and real. No one goes into something wanting to hear a, an act. It's quite it's quite an odd quite an odd thing that we sort of subscribe to the fact that everyone's got their own sort of street appearance and their own sort of um persona and then completely forget it in the moment we start listening. <laughs> Fascinating. Keep listening to people. Keep listening to whatever's going on around you. The next 10 months, 12 months, you're going to hear and see things that you're not going to get a chance to hear and see again. Just get out and enjoy as much of it as possible and take it in. And uh, it always keeps giving the more you listen. Playing take, can take away from you, performing can take away from you. Listening never gives you anything else but enjoyment and game. I just want to make enough that I can give it all away Settle the debts of my pride and get out of this town You can keep all the things that my friends they gave They were given free, but it's not enough To let it all burn down I've been here too long and I'm tired of these places sometimes. The streets of this town, they drag you in. Oh, my friends, they try and help me. Jazz band plays all across the open pavement. Tired standards in the air, oh, and their tongues are young. And I give them up too freely, but I still like to believe there's something.
especially if they ain't gonna stop. Oh, especially if they ain't.